Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I'm looking at a Mercedes here. So this is a GL350. So I'm inside the vehicle here. Start up. We have a engine management light on there. So this is a 2012 with 238,000 miles. So I'm using the launch Eurotab 3 scan tool here. There is a lot of modules here to go through. So we've just got into the engine ECU. Now we have a, a lot of faults here. Diesel particle filter defective. Soot content is too high. Learned values for the DPF component is outside permissible range. Is it? Yep. The lower value of the component B28 was dropped below, not reached. What else have we got? We have lower limit of the component again. And then finally we have relay engine circuit. Front SAM control unit fuse and relay module switches off too early. Mm, I'm not sure about that one. Um, right, let's clear the codes. Okay, so we've cleared the faults. Let's see what remains. So we've got the differential pressure and soot content too high. Let's have a look at the data stream. 19 millibar, now the engine is off. So that's obviously incorrect, but it's very common. The sensors on these are always playing up. Start the engine up. Rev it up and down. So that's not moving. So it's clearly a DPF sensor issue. Okay, so we have the bonnet up here. It's the V6, so it's a 3 liter. Get this uh, engine cover off. go so you can see there are lots of tar on the air filter housing but by the looking at it it looks like it's had the injector seals cleaned off because you can see there there's visible signs that there it, it's had uh, black soot coming from the injectors so the, the black death also known as I can see the sensor is just down there differential pressure sensor it doesn't look original to me so I'm just gonna Maybe get the airbox out of the way, it might be a little bit easier to reach it. Now it's got two T30 uh, torques here, one each side. Okay, we've got the air filter out. We can now see the sensor a little bit better down there. Okay, so I'm just going to use my fingers to press the two tabs and to take the plug off. Open the So we've got the engine running and on the larger diameter hose I've got connected up a manometer. So we have 28-29 millibars of, of pressure there in the DPF. So disconnect that. Okay so I'm using Launch UK DPF cleaning fluid and I've got that into my gun here. Now I've got the gun attached to that same hose, second hose, so it's a larger diameter one. Now I can squeeze the trigger, get the fluid sprayed into the DPF down there. It's connected up to the compressor at 131 psi. So I'll put about half of the fluid in. I'm going to start the engine up and put the rest in. Okay, so that's all of the fluid gone. We can see the pipe is now cleared out. Get that disconnected. Give it a few revs to clear it out. Then you'll see some smoke coming from the exhaust. So we've got here a replacement sensor from Mercedes. That's the part number for it. That is the unit there. 
Okay, that's the new sensor in, all of the airbox back together. Okay, now we've got the engine started up. I'm gonna hold the revs up. We'll hold them there for a few minutes. So now I've got the DPF pressure up live and we're just gonna watch that. What we like to see that coming down to is around about 40 or 50 millibars, between 40 to 60 millibars, ideally, but anything under 100 is acceptable. But we'll see how low we can get it. Oh yeah, another thing to point out, of course, is now that we are accelerating and we have move, movement on the, the sensor, it's actually reading the pressure. And it's going to kick out a lot of vapour like that. Okay, so that topped out there at 130. It didn't seem to go any lower. Let's see where we are on idle. 27 okay, but I've only been holding it there for around about a minute, but I could see it sort of stalled out a bit So now what I'm gonna do is come back out of the codes and we'll go to special functions Just because I want to get it out of limp mode where we can get the turbo working and get this DPF cleared out properly So I'm looking for DPF replacement and the process of the DPF pressure sensor This one Press replacement. You can see there, it's never been reset before by the looks of it, because it's 359,000 kilometers, kilometers ago since the last time the ash was reset. Now we'll do teaching of the pressure sensor. And I always like to do this on these uh, Mercedes as well That resets the air filters Now we can come back here clear the fault code Now if we read the fault codes we can see that there is none So we exit that now and we'll take it on a drive Okay, I'm gonna take the vehicle on a drive We'll give it some some nice hard revs to get everything cleared out so I want to get the get the boost working okay so we've taken it on a bit of a test drive and we can see there that we still have 26 millibars of pressure so it's not really good enough um, what I don't know what may may happen is if it does it's own regeneration after uh, sort of maybe an hour hour of hours journey um, that may work I did have a look at trying to see if we can trigger off a regen see if we can get that down but yes yeah, right there no but obviously it's saying it doesn't need a regen so it won't allow you to do it back to the live data we'll select all of those again so if that pressure does not come down after it's been driven for a while then the engine management light may come back up. We've got the sensor working now but we just haven't got the pressure low enough where I'd like it to be. Um, the DPF itself may be damaged or filled with ash so it's possible it might need a replacement. So that's it, we're all finished on the GL350. See you in the next video.